Okay, welcome everyone. I am going to call to order the July 25th African Heritage Reparation Assembly meeting at 2.03 p.m. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. So we're just going to take a moment to make sure that everybody can be heard and can hear. And if you could, at the same time, please state the time that you need to leave the meeting. I'm gonna do that up front today because we've run into some uh, challenges in previous meetings where people have to leave. So just if you could tell us what your hard stop is, that would be wonderful. So welcome Ms. Bridges, nice to see you for your first meeting. <laughs> so good to have very you. Very much, thank you very much, <laughs> very happy to be here. Yeah, thank you. So we can hear you and I assume you can hear us. Absolutely. And do you have a hard stop today? Uh, three is fine for me. Three o'clock, okay, all right, great. Um, welcome, Lynn. Lynn is joining us today. Thank you. Can you hear us and can we hear you, Lynn? I can. Thank you. And I'm out of here as soon as you're done with me. Okay. <laughs> you're always welcome to stay. You know that. But I, thank, thank you. you. For I, I enjoy this meeting, but I, I am going to leave as soon as I'm done. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Um, and welcome, Pamela. Again, nice to have you here for a second time. <laughs> I can hear and I'm happy to be here. Excellent. Thank you. And Yvonne, haven't seen you in a couple of meetings, so good to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's good to be here. Um, I can hear. Everything is fine. And I do have a hard stop at three o'clock. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. And Hala? Yes, I can hear you. You can hear me and I can stop when we're done. Okay, <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, Dr. Shabazz? I'm here, thank you. And uh, I have a soft stop at three, three uh, but so it's not hard. <laughs> okay, good, I like that. Uh, Dr. Rhodes? I, I'm here and I can hear, and I have a hard stop at 3.30. Okay, great. And Alexis? Hi, um, I do have a hard stop at three. Okay. And Jennifer, I assume you can hear, but let's make sure we can hear you again. <laughs> Hi, I can hear you and you can hear me. And I um, don't have a hard stop. I'm here till you guys are done. Okay, great. Well, I would have liked to take a few minutes to um, give uh, Ms. Bridges an opportunity to introduce herself. Um, and I would still like to do that, um, please. Um, just bearing in mind that we we it sounds like we have about an hour we have two uh, two issues that we need to get through today and i'd like to get to a third um but we'll do our best and so we'll start with you deborah if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and um saying maybe very briefly why you decided to apply for and join the committee i will and um, thank you for uh welcoming me um, my purpose was, um, my family is seven generations in Amherst, uh, including ind indigenous and the history that I've lived, um, since way since I've been born, the history that I know of the harm, um, I just wanted to be here and let people know um, as being a descendant, what that was like, um, as opposed to, I realize people tell stories and uh, archive stories, but when it comes from a descendant, uh, like for me, um, people might not really know the real history, like remembering sitting on my grandfather's lap seeing his tears, letting him, him telling me what exactly went on here. And people wouldn't know the smell, 
the smell of him, the tears, the stories he's told me. Um, I think only descendants can do that and put their experience in with that. So that's me. Well, thank you. We are so blessed to have you, Ms. Bridges. Thank you so yeah. much for joining us. Um, and uh, Pamela also was here last week, but I don't think everybody else was here. So Pamela, would you mind unmuting and just maybe sharing a few words? Uh, also such a blessing to have you um, as our new DEI director. And I was just thinking this morning and reflecting like, wow, we have a DEI director. Like we did this, we got to this point. And um, so it's really awesome. So if you would, that would be wonderful. Um, I, we can't hear you. Very, I'm still getting used <laughs> to having a microphone on. So I am Pamela Nolan Young, the DEI director for the town of Amherst. I'll be working with all of the board's commissions, the town council, and also with town residents in ensuring that we meet sort of the vision that the town has created for itself around DEI work. Um, and I have a wonderful partner in, in Jen, and I certainly want to emphasize it's a partnership. Um, we each bring you know, different skills to the work and are looking forward to working together on that. So I'm just happy to be here and to assist you guys. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you've really jumped into a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> Um, okay, wonderful. So um, we see that Lynn is here um, and Lynn is here because we are going to start by talking about the draft special legislation. You've all seen a memo now from KP Law. You've also seen a draft of the special legislation. We're not going to spend really much time at all talking about the content of the legislation today or of the memo. What we really want to hone in on today while we have Lynn here with us is the process for which this special legislation is going to move forward. And so Lynn has put together very thoughtfully a proposed process for how we might move this forward and wanted to come here today to ask for the assembly's feedback on that process to answer any questions. Um, and this is up for um, conversation in the next town council meeting on August 15th. So this is our opportunity here. I've sent you the process that Lynn sent to me, but I'm also going to bring it up onto the screen now for us to look at. Um, and I'm not the best at sharing screen, but I'm gonna try here um, and see where I get. So just please bear with me. Um, this thing down. Okay, here we go. Um, where are you? Of course, I had it all ready and now I can't find it. Um, hmm. It looked like you had clicked on it at one moment. Did it? Okay, I sent it to you all, right? Um, so I'm gonna do this. How's that? Everyone see that? Or okay. as it's loading? <laughs> okay, wonderful. So Lynn, I'd like to turn it over to you, if that's okay, just to sort of go through this if you'd like, and then we can open it up, up for some discussion. Does that work for you? Absolutely. And first of all, thank you for taking this time on uh, as we move toward the end of July uh, and for all the work this committee has done. Whenever the town is in the process of proposing special legislation uh, to the legislature, that special legislation has to be approved by the town council because it's on behalf of the town. And so when um, KP Law came forward with this, uh, with the memo and the draft legislation they sent you, I figured it was best if we all agree on what the process is 
uh, for how that's going to move forward. And let me just say the only other experience that the council has with this is when we moved forward. And I, I just want to tell you up front, it has not moved forward in the legislature, and that is ranked choice voting. And that also is considered special legislation. It requires home rule. And the committee did a fantastic job on this. And it came to the council, as it will in this case, as a recommendation. And uh, in the process of it coming to the council's recommendation, I don't think we did if we did a tweak, we might have done, that's about it. Um, and then we filed it in December of 2020. And at that point, um, we had been working with Representative Dom and Senator Comerford, and both of them have been absolutely diligent about that process, okay? Now, I could talk about the political side of this, and I'm more than glad to, but I am going to encourage that at some point you ask um, Joe Comerford and Mindy and myself back to a meeting to talk about what you can expect at the legislative level, because I think that that would be really helpful for you to understand. And I will just tell you from the experience we're having with ranked choice voting, it's nothing but frustrating. I, I'm like so frustrated at this point because it may die at the end of this legislative session and we may have to refile it again. And then it's an issue of timing. And then the issue of how what happens with special legislation. So you as a committee have a recommendation that has been developed by KP Law. We want you to spend time putting that together. We want you to spend time reviewing it. We want you to spend time looking at how that special le legislation supports the goals of your recommended um, distribution of funds. The only reason that this legislation needs to be filed is if you choose to distribute funds to individuals, because at this point, the town of Amherst cannot do that with special legislation approved by the House, the Senate, and signed by the governor, you would be, we would be able to do that, okay? And that's the reason for special legislation. There are many other things that the committee may choose to recommend be done with the funds for reparations. Those don't require special legislation. This is the only thing that does. Um, and so what I'm suggesting to you in the second bullet is that you prepare this when you're ready, you bring it forth to the council. I suggested that there be a report with it, not a really long report, but something that gives the council a flavor of the debate or any other documents you looked at. And if you want an example, look at what we got from the um, group that did ranked choice voting. Bluntly, that's a very thorough report and it's a much more complicated issue, okay, than this is. So don't be turned off by how thorough and lengthy it is. Once we have that report, it will come to the council. The council will review it along with a special legislation. We'll have a joint meeting with you, or at least a meeting where you make a presentation and we have discussion and an opportunity. And we've had those before with the finance committee and so forth. Uh, and then once the, and, and the council, it does get to mess with your, what you recommend, because that's what councils do. Okay. And uh, once we come up with a recommendation of the legislation that we want to file, then we will officially vote and we will officially file it. And in that process, in addition to just your having a meeting and talking with Mindy and Joe and myself, if you would be willing to include me, um, about what happens at the legislative level. Um, I think it's also important to think about what kinds of things the council is going to ask. And that's, that's one reason why I say in the hollow bullet, um, to the extent um, 
a, a second hollow bullet, uh, a preliminary or a final allocation plan, and you're in too far. And then in the third hollow bullet, to the extent possible, the recommended process. Because as you as you have been able to gather, I'm sure, from the uh, discussions about reparations, people are curious. They want to know. Uh, they're not just curious. They want to know what do you want this money to be used for, and um, how will you make those decisions? And so, and I'm not here today to discuss any of how you want that money to be used or the decision process. I am here only to make sure that you and I have a conversation about this proposed process so that when we bring it to the council on the 15th of August, you have already had your opportunity to weigh in. For example, let me just say, the council may say, well, along with that brief report, we would like the following. And then we'll come back and I'll, you know, a revised draft of this would be given. So let me just stop with that and see what questions you have. And uh, Michelle, I'm gonna have you uh, call on people as you choose as chair. Sure, thank you very much, Lynn. That was very, very helpful. And we'll start with you, Dr. Shabazz. And then I see Dr. Rhodes's hand is up. Uh, right now, those are the two hands we have. Thank you. I just would like to see if um, we could kind of Gantt chart this uh, process in relation to if we want to move forward with uh, getting this to the legislature. I think I, um, I see that the earliest uh, for submitting um, and, and moving this into the process uh, nothing's going to be looked at before January, even if we turn over something tomorrow, is if I'm reading that correctly. So our our sort of first timeline step in Gantt charting this at the earliest would be um, would be January. Am I correct? For it to actually go to the legislature. Now, clearly, it could come to the council well before then. And let me just be further more explicit because this is where we get into the messy legislative process. The legislature in Massachusetts is a two year legislative process. If nothing passes after two years, they die and it has to be refiled. So this will be the beginning of the next legislative session because we elect new state officials this, no, this November. Um, so it can be filed anytime after that. And the, what happened last time, and frankly, it happens every two years, and that is last time we actually had a change in leadership at the house level. And so the committees took even longer to be appointed. And then once they're appointed, it takes a while until bills are actually assigned to committees. And this is where Mindy, for example, is extremely helpful in trying to steer it to the best committee so that it stays out of the certain committees. That, that's what she really did for ranked choice voting. And even then it looks like we're gonna have to refile that this coming year. Once it, it and we're, we're now going through what looks like that surge of let's get it all done by the end of July 31st, 2022, before we all go home and run for election. And that's, I don't want us to get caught in that process again with any of these, because we have this coming, we will, as I mentioned, refile ranked choice voting, and we will also have at least one other piece of legislation probably being filed as well. But the short answer is, the earliest we would file it is January, and I am more than willing to help uh, develop that flow chart, work plan, whatever, with Michelle and the rest of the committee. Okay. Thank you. Thank sure. you, Lynn. Dr. Shabazz, do you have anything um, to respond to right now with regard to that? No, Before this is, this is great. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, Dr. Rhodes. Uh, just a clarification, Lynn. Um, am I understanding that these two hollow uh, points that you uh, referred to 
are related to if uh, we were seeking to uh, have funds distributed to individuals? Yes. The legis uh, yes, go ahead, Irv. No, no, go ahead. I mean, no, the legislation is only necessary if you're going to be asking to distribute money to individuals. Other than that, we would not need to file any legislation. If, in fact, the committee says we want to we want to distribute money to individuals, then we have to file this legislation. And in that case, and in the broader case, when it comes to the council, they're going to want to know, well, how do you plan to spend your money in general? How do you, you know, um, what's your plan and what's your decision making process? Because as you also may remember, once decisions are made, this is how we would like to spend your money, the money that's in this fund or the interest, however you again recommend, that, that has to also come to whatever council is seated at the time for approval. But the bullets here really apply to the issue of sent, giving money to individuals. All right, thank you for that. So um, you know, one of the things I would note, I don't, uh, we haven't voted on how, you know, if we were going to distribute this to individuals, which is something that we obviously have to do as A and B. The second part is if we vote not to distribute to individuals, this does not have to go to special legislation, but you are also saying that uh, if we do not go with individuals, the town council still is going to want to know um, answers to uh, a hollow point, the two hollow points that you just uh, referred to. That is correct. Thank you. And let me just mention, and again, I don't want to get into what you're going to spend the money for, but I want us to seek clarification on whether or not scholarships are considered giving money to individuals versus something like a home, a payment toward a home. Okay, that definitely is. But I know one of the other things from time to time that has come up is the issue of scholarships. And I wanna make sure we clarify whether that would be considered giving money to individuals, okay? And Lynn, thank you for raising that point. I want to further clarify for the committee that when we're talking about direct benefits or directing benefits to an individual, that could be in a grant for a down payment on a home. It's we're not we're not talking strictly about a cash payment. So just to differentiate that um, we've never really as a committee talked about cash payment benefits. We haven't had that discussion yet, but in some reparative justice plans and some uh, conversations about reparations, cash payments are made. So I just want to differentiate that any grant that we would make to an individual, like Lynn said, um, for a home, a home ownership uh, down payment, for example, would would be considered um, a direct payment to an individual that would require the special legislation. Mm -hmm. Just to and, further clarify that. Yeah, and Michelle, if there's any additional nuances of this, I'm going to also urge that through Paul, you arrange to have our town attorney attend one of your meetings for any of those points of clarification. Absolutely, that would be fantastic. So, uh, Michelle, just to clarify, it's, Indiv yeah. indiv individual grants and or um, scholarships and or down payments uh, for home ownership, all of those would be considered um, uh, money going to individuals. Is, am I stating that correctly? That's my interpretation of KP Law's review, yes. Already then. Um, so, Dr. Shabazz, I'm going to go to Yvonne since they haven't had a chance to speak, and then we'll, we can come back to you. Yvonne? Yeah, I wanted to add that if we had anything that also would be considered a grant for um, legal aid or legal assistance, that would also go to individuals. But I also wanted to ask, um, uh, you know, um, Lynn, you were talking about nuances. 
So one of those nuances I think we might want to investigate is if we give money to, let's say, the Martin Luther King breakfast to redistribute that money as a scholarship. Um, that is the, one of those sticky nuances because event, you know, it, is, it is a grant to an individual, but we're not, we're not giving the money to the individual. We're giving the money to the organization. Right. right. So I think in a couple of different ways, like if we give money to legal aid to assist individuals with legal um, fees, that's another sort of nuance that, that I understand that would seem almost feel like a loophole, right? In, in the, in the, and that would be something, I mean, I'm gonna urge, I'm bringing it up, not that we want to go the route of loopholes, right. but bringing it up as that we want to be as transparent as possible in every way. Cause we don't want a lot of questions around like, well, this happened and this was like, they skirted around the rules. You know what I'm saying? So right. I think that we should be really you know, cognizant and aware that there are ways that we could do it, but we may not want to do that. Right. And those are exactly the kind of nuances that I want to make sure that we're all real clear about. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. And um, I think it will be great to have somebody, Lauren specifically, because I think that she drafted this to, to um, join us and answer these questions. Dr. Shabazz. Thanks. So I, I just wanted to also get an understanding that um, the uh, for this entire process, though, the town is in support of our uh, utilizing the services of the town attorney of getting the help that we need, you know, um, if it's one meeting, if it takes two meetings. Is that uh, correct? Uh, Hi, uh, Amakar. Uh, Paul Bockelman it manages the town attorney's um, contract. Okay, uh, I have never seen. That's not true. I have seen one or two situations where we didn't feel the question that was going to go to the town attorney was necessary or appropriate. But in terms of, for instance, you all wanted draft legislation and an opinion, Paul did make sure that happened. It was a little delayed, not through any efforts of his or mine. Um, if, uh, you know, I, I will continue to support and uh, I'm sure Paul will as well, that you would have access to the town attorney for other questions. Absolutely. Okay, so um, one of the questions, I'm not seeing any other hands at this moment. So maybe while other members um, consider whether they have questions or comments to make, I'd like to just point out that um, Lynn, this is a really thoughtful and very, very much appreciated. Um, and especially considering, as you said, it's the second time that we're doing this <laughs> as a town council. So, um, my question was related to timing, mostly in that we have until June 2023 to complete our charge. Right. And my sense is that for us to go through the consultative process with members of the Black community, it's going to take us some time to get through that and to begin making decisions about eligibility and use of funds. And it may not even be that this committee ultimately is the recommending body. This committee might, for example, recommend that a stakeholder committee be put together to make those recommendations similar to, say, CPA. Um, so I just want to be really clear with you as the president of the town council that if our report isn't fully fleshed out by the time that we'd like to get this submitted, let's say in January or February, or perhaps we'll make we'll, we'll go through everything and then decide to submit it in June at the same time that our report is completed. Mm -hmm. um, but if we're not there at the time that we do want to begin the process of submitting the special legislation, I just want to make sure that we'll have that opportunity to discuss the reasons why it's not been fully fleshed out um, mm -hmm. at the time of doing so. Yeah, I, I really encourage you to get as far along as you can before you bring the legislation to the council. And at the January thing, I'll, I'll just be honest, 
if this didn't get filed until March or even June of 2023, that would be fine. You still have a full year of additional legislative action. So it, a home rule can be filed anytime. It's just that the first time it can be filed under this upcoming legislative session is in January of 2023. There's nothing magical of saying if it doesn't get filed then, okay? It can get filed after that. Okay, great, perfect. Um, so before we let Lynn go, um, are there any other questions from committee members about the process? Um, does the committee feel like it wants to take a vote that it endorses this process? Does it want to um, endorse just by, uh, you know, consensus here? Um, does it have any suggested changes or recommendations? And I'll also look to you, Pamela and Jennifer, if there's anything that either of you would like to add, um, we would be very happy to hear that. I, Dr. Rhodes? Yeah. It feels like to me that it would be really fruitful to have some of the questions that Yvonne raised in terms of nuances uh, answered by uh, KP Law uh, before we move on uh, to other matters related to this. Because of, you know, those answers would, in, at least in my view, from uh, my view, uh, give me a greater capability of, of voting on whether, we're, whether or not we want it to, uh, A, um, have distribution to individuals, and B, uh, if, if we did not, then we would not need to file special legislation. So those nuanced questions are really important to me. Would you scroll up to the, just slightly? Sure. And I, I just wanted to make sure that I said, yes, that could involve any number of discussions, including additional consultation with the town attorney arranged through the town manager. Yes, absolutely. I, I hear you, Irv. And what I can do when we finish up is um, I can work with Lynn and Paul um, to have a discussion with Lauren about her schedule and when it might be best, the best time for her to come back and meet with us as well as Rep Dom and uh, Senator Comerford, if that's appropriate. And of course, Lynn, anytime that you're able to join us and partner with us in this is, is very welcomed and appreciated. So, um, so I'm looking um, to you, Pamela or Jennifer, if you have anything that you wanted to comment on or add at this moment, or if any other members have anything to add at this time before um, my, my sense is if I'm hearing, if I'm hearing back, we will have another meeting, I hope next Monday, before the town council meets again, but it sounds like generally we have some consensus around this plan, we have some questions, I think there's a lot of built in to this plan that allows um, us to do the various things that Irv is mentioning and Yvonne is mentioning so um, just one last call here. And Pamela, I saw that you unmuted. Yes, please. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Eventually I'll get the hang of this. I don't really have anything uh, to add other than I agree with Dr. Rhodes that I think um, the consultation with KP would be the most helpful in deciding um, what steps you wanna take for going forward. Excellent. All right, so we will work on that. Um, and if there aren't any other questions or comments at this time, then I wanna thank Lynn for joining us um, and we will be in touch soon. It's always my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So I am going to move us, um, I'm gonna call for public comment now. I know that there is, um, or at least was, let me get a look. Um, yes, there is somebody in the audience that I know would like, to, at least one person that would like to make public comment and there may be others. So I'm gonna pause now to take public comment and then we'll move on to um, the rest of our agenda. So I will make our public comment statement here quickly. During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public when called on 
um, please identify yourself by stating your full name, pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. The AHRA will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment, but we will certainly be listening very closely. Um, and I do see one hand is raised. So if um, Jennifer, would you bring Meg Gage into the room? Hi, everybody. Um, hi, Yvonne. What a treat to see some of you. I haven't seen it so long. Hey, Big Gates. Uh, How are you doing? Fine. Is that Yvonne? I'm going great. Have, where have you been? Where have I been? <laughs> uh, I know. Um, anyway, um, we'll have to catch up. And Alexis is there, too, and Deborah. Anyway, first of all, that was a very interesting discussion. It's not the second time the town has tried to get a special legislation. Every single year of town meeting, we ask the legislature to allow residents of Amherst who are not citizens to be able to vote in local only elections. Every single year we did it and every single year they didn't, they didn't do anything. So I'm just saying it's, it's a tradition, a long, well-honed tradition. Um, I, some of you were at the last uh, scheduled meeting that, that didn't actually happen. And I'm just, for, for you, you, this will be repeating myself, but I really want to do that. I am on here now to apologize sincerely for speaking at the finance committee meeting before the council vote uh, without having first come to you to share my opinion. Uh, I did try to, and because of busy schedules and various things that didn't work out and I should have not commented uh, because I hadn't uh, spoken with you as a group. Um, so I apologize. Uh, and I know the issues that I raised are being raised still, and I look forward to a uh, healthy conversation about, uh, about your, the future of what you're going to do. Um, I uh, am planning to, sub to submit a proposal to you for your next meeting from the League of Women Voters Racial Justice Committee, of which I'm a member, uh, and I will send it to you in writing. <laughs> and. Uh, be before the meeting and hopefully it'll, I'll be able to squeeze onto your agenda next week. We are sponsoring a webinar with uh, Sandy Darity and Kristen Mullen about the book they wrote, um, From Here to Equality. And we've made an agreement with them to buy, in lieu of an honorarium, to buy $2,500 worth of their book books. And we're working, uh, we're trying to, uh, we're organizing a book reading that will happen sometime after the uh, stolen bean reading. And we're, hang on, to, I'm just in a meeting, kiddos. You can come in, but you have to, I can't talk to you right now. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I'm not on there visually, am I? Doesn't no. matter. Um, <laughs> then you don't see these cute kids and our grand dog that we're taking care of. I'm on vacation and I'm so sorry about that. Um, <laughs> um, we are, uh, working with Sandy and Kirsten to pu put this together as one of our Judy Brooks conversations. And we would like to explore with you the idea of co-sponsoring it with the assembly. I don't think you'd have to do much uh, because we're already all over it in terms of the work and organizing the books and figuring out how to pay for the $2,500 worth of books. But it seems like it would be a, a good way for to show uh, active conversation among different people working for racial justice in town. And because that's what the book is about, it seems that this would be a, a could be a positive thing. Um, so I'll be sending you and writing something, spelling out that proposal uh, in order for you to discuss it at your next meeting. Uh, and I also, I had a very helpful conversation earlier today with Dr. Shabazz and Michelle. I've got to figure out who gets to be doctor and who's just by their first name, but I'll figure that out. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'm happy to be Meg, but um, about a converse, finding a way for the League of Women Voters Racial Justice Committee uh, to have a exchange with the assembly to better understand what you're doing. And because we've discussed your work several times in our meetings and it would be helpful to have an off the record discussion about what you're thinking and share some of our ideas of what we've been thinking. Uh, 
So, but that's still on the road and everyone's so busy, I can't quite picture how we would ever make that happen. But I think that would be another positive way to uh, move this conversation along. There's nothing wrong with people, sincere people who are trying hard to do the right thing, disagreeing from time to time. That's not a problem. The problem is when they can't talk about it with each other and look at in depth of what their thinking is and what their experience is. We all bring really different experiences. Uh, and as a white person, I know I have to be modest. Mine are, you know, I'll never know really uh, what it's being living the life as a person of color. Uh, but, but white people and people of color can be in these conversations together nonetheless. So I look forward to that. And I'm gonna apologize that I spoke at that meeting without letting you know, you know, talking to you first. It's good to see everybody. Hey, Jen, I love this group. And Alexis and I are working on a project. So uh, fantastic. Good, I appreciate all you're doing and Michelle, your leadership is important. Thank you very much, Meg. Thank you for, for coming today and we will definitely uh, be looking forward to seeing the proposal. Okay, thank you. Bye everybody. I'm gonna put my hand, I'm gonna mute. Hey, if there is anyone else who would like to make public comment, please go ahead and raise your hand now. All right, not seeing any, and I am seeing uh, that Pamela has her hand raised. So, yeah, I was just going to um, ask Meg, but I think she's gone. So maybe Jennifer got it. The title of the book that she mentioned, I wasn't able to capture that. It's From Here to Equality. Okay, thank you. Okay, wonderful. So the um, second item on the agenda that I want to make sure that we get to today, actually, there are two items that I would really like to get to today, starting with the mass humanities application that we submitted. Um, I want to start by really thanking Hala um, for the tremendous work that went into that application. I don't know if others have worked with Mass Humanities or who have applied for a grant. It was my first time, um, and it's a lot of work, <laughs> um, and it really turned out beautifully. Uh, I appreciate all of the feedback that we received. Um, Ms. Bridges, your feedback in the end was incredibly useful and helpful. Um, for the application. And so we did submit the application and I heard um, a couple days later from the um, grant director and the grant director asked for us to um, produce a couple more things by 5 p.m. today. Um, <laughs> so I've been working on those things. Those things included, um, so we listed Hala and Alexis as the humanities directors for the grant. Um, and those two people needed to submit resumes. Um, so I will be submitting Hala and Alexis's resume today. Um, there was also uh, a piece about the budget. Um, that was really the biggest actual piece that we needed to define better. Um, so <clears throat> the way that a mass humanities grant works is in this case, it's a $20,000 grant. And then there's a $20,000 match um, that, the, that the organization applying needs to contribute. And the way that it works is that of the 20,000, 18,000 of that can come from in-kind donations and 2,000 will need to come as a cash contribution. So this committee will need to vote uh, when we vote um, on an operating budget to include $2,000. If we are to be successful in getting the grant, we will need to contribute from, if this committee would still like to move forward with it, we'll need to contribute $2,000 um, of our funding to do that, which will have to go through the town council for approval. Um, and then the rest of the, the match, the 18,000 comes in in-kind contributions. And so what I've been doing behind the scenes here since speaking with the director of grants on Friday is to try to um, get some 
letters of commitment from one Mattia Kramer. Um, Mattia has written a very, uh, a very, very good letter of commitment stating that she will commit X amount of hours over the next nine months in kind toward the research as an extension of the research that she's already helped us with. Um, in addition, um, I've spoken with Alexis and Jim at Amherst Media, and they are providing a letter of commitment to provide in-kind contributions in addition to what they'll get um, as a result of the, the grant budget. Um, and so it doesn't have to be uh, so specific that every single dollar of that 18,000 has to be spelled out, but the director of grants felt that some letters of commitment would be helpful in terms of us um, receiving the full $20,000 award. So I'm gonna pause there and uh, I see Dr. Shabazz that your hand is raised. Yes, it sounded like you were seeking a motion, so I was prepared to offer one. Um, please tell me what you what reflect to me what you heard in terms of motion. I was going to offer a motion. I move that the African Heritage Reparations Assembly uh, approve up to two thousand in a a, a two thousand dollar request of up to two thousand dollars as a match in the furtherance of this mass humanities uh, expanding Massachusetts. Voices grant application. Great, thank you for offering that. And if we are ready to make that, to, to vote on that, that would be really fantastic because what that would mean is I could get it to the town council sooner than later um, because it will need to be reviewed and approved by the town council. Um, I saw Dr. Rhodes' hand go up and then Yvonne. I just want to second that motion. Excellent. Okay. Um, Yvonne? Um, I feel like it's um, a prelim. First of all, is it, is it necessary? I guess I'm trying to figure out if you, um, it, this is a motion that will help you move ahead with the proposal that you've already turned in that you, that's due today. You said it's due today. Correct. It was due last week, um, but we, Admitted it on time, and then they gave they give every applicant a window to deal with any you know issues. <laughs> um, this isn't an issue that needs to be decided today. Um, it's really only an issue if we are to receive the grant. So that being said, I think it would um, it would behoove us to move forward with it today because if we end up receiving the grant and then we have to go through this process and get it into the town council um it may not quite line up so my preference so would my my question is the up to two thousand dollars i guess that's my question i mean if you're getting in kind information from um um amherst media and from this other consultant will that equal the 18 that you you know what I'm saying? If it's not 18, then we're going to have to kick in more money. So having it be a certain amount of money, I mean, we can vote it through, but if it's 4,000 instead of 2,000, we have to re-vote anyway. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to figure out what it is, how far in the process you are uh, um, figuring out exactly what that ratio is so that we can vote on something that's more accurate. Yeah, that's an excellent question question and to be very clear the minimum amount is two thousand and what Yvonne is saying is that if we don't have in-kind contributions of eighteen thousand then we have to kick in more at this point given the in-kind contributions that I have uh, received from Amherst Media, from Mattia Kramer and from the committee which is actually what we that's the way that we can sort of fill in um, the gap there is if each committee member is willing to contribute in kind, which we will be doing through our work naturally, every discussion we have on this is volunteer hours. So I have a formula that I'm putting together that gets us to that 18,000. Um, it's, it's only if the person on the committee is working on that particular project. It's not general work. It's specific work to that project. Yes, 
Exactly. Um, but my point is, I think that we'll all be contributing to the project, maybe at different levels. So some of us may only contribute, um, you know, by talking about it in meetings, whereas others of us are going to form subcommittees or contribute in more significant yeah. ways. I, I guess I'm saying talking at meetings, I don't think uh, becomes, doesn't, isn't, doesn't count. Yeah, I think it count. has to be real, you know, real work on the project yeah. itself, i.e. writing an article or interviewing someone or writing a report, you know, something that's real and tangible specifically to that project. Yeah. Okay, that's a good clarification. I think what we could do with this motion potentially is um, give it some more flexibility, or we can hold off until after I've submitted and we receive notice from the grant director that what we've submitted is going to be, it's going to fly, basically. <laughs> um, and I would be happy to, to hold off on it until next week so that we know, we should know that by then, um, if that, if that's something that the group would prefer to do. Deborah, was your hand raised? Did I see your hand raised? No. Okay. Or Hala, was it, was your hand raised? Yes, please. But you covered it with the, the volunteer hours. Because I okay. even think the hours on the grant would go to that potentially because that's specifically for that project so yes because it was specifically for that project yes but us going to meetings doesn't i mean not sure that that applies but working on the grant or coordinating um folks who are going to be working on the project that would that would also like if we if one of us ends up being a coordinator that would definitely be like you know work hours if I might to just clarify my motion on the floor, um, it, it and if there's a different way to uh, modify or to amend it to to reflect a possibility that we don't have to come back and revote an amount. Uh, my view is is that um, one, it's going to be up to Mass Humanities as to the funding level. They may approve it at 20, they may approve it at 16. I, I'm not sure if it's a fixed award that anyone they award, it's gonna be 20, or if they look at the budget and they may say, no, this only really needs 16 from us. And all, and so if it was even 16, then, then the prorated 20% amount is still going to be less than 2000. So I figured that up to would mean that if we did get maximum funding of 20, and if we did have letters of commitment expressing uh, in-kind contributions of 18, then up to two would cover whatever circumstance, even if we didn't get fully funded at 20. The other piece of this is, is that in terms of we can, I'm happy to withdraw if uh, folks aren't comfortable at this point, but it seemed to me rather than kick the can, if we are, you know, are, are continuing in our support for this project, which we've already voted before is something we thought good to do. We've, you know, all the way back to the beginning of starting the writing. So if we're still good with it, then to me, I'm just trying to find a way. The spirit of my motion is, is to go forward with approving uh, whatever it is, the request, so that we can begin working on the request through the town manager, through the town council to have that funding piece uh, guaranteed. Uh, or, or, or support it so that, uh, again, mass humanities will know that that's not a, that's not a question. They, you know, we've, we've moved on it and we're getting the, the, the cash uh, amount uh, in addition to the letters saying in kind. So what would be helpful for me, Dr. Shabazz, right now, in terms of having three minutes left, I'm going to be, when we get off this meeting, working from three to five o'clock to get those remaining items over. We have a five o'clock deadline. What would be helpful for me is to have a motion from this committee that gives me um, the direction to, on behalf of the committee, provide an in-kind donation commitment of up to whatever amount I need to fill in, you know what I mean, for people on this committee who will be working directly on this project. 
Um, if we can do that by consensus, if you all say, yeah, Michelle, it's fine, go ahead, write it. But if you want that in a motion, if you want to give me that direction and emotion, then we need to do that now with the last couple of minutes we have left. And then I'm comfortable going forward with your motion as well, but I'm also fine to wait on that until next week. Um, so I saw Alexis and then Dr. Rhodes. Oh, yeah, I was just going to ask if um, <clears throat> if adding um, more in kind stuff has to be included in that. Like, can can more in kind labor be added retroactively? No. Yes, everything has to be in to her by 5 p.m. today. So, um, and I'm sorry that I only met with her on Friday. I've been working on these other letters of commitment with Amherst Media and with Mattia Kramer. I have reached out to Mike Kelly, who's the head archivist at Amherst College. He's on a leave, a sabbatical, a research sabbatical. Um, so unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a letter from him. Um, but but we do have to have it in by 5 p.m. I think probably if we received a letter later, um, if it was a reflection of what was in the budget, we could submit it, but it has to all be reflected in the budget today by five. Um, Dr. Rhodes. You know, we need to dispose of the, uh, the motion on the floor. Um, yes. One way or the other. Okay, um, Dr. Shabazz, do you want to withdraw it and wait till Monday, next Monday, or do you want to um, if, move if this, if, if this isn't helpful or necessary for you for 5 p.m. and there are still questions about it, I'm happy to withdraw it. Okay, if you if if that works for you, that would be great. If somebody would be willing to make another motion that directs me to write a letter of commitment on behalf of the AHRA to contribute in kind donations up to whatever amount is necessary um, for specific work on this project, um, that would be helpful. Yes, Yvonne, please. Yeah, I don't think it's the in kind. I think it's the cash donation that we're voting on. Yeah, I don't think it's the in kind. But so I've agreed to withdraw. I've agreed to withdraw the the, the cash, uh, the the authorization to request the cash donation if that's not important. I'm hearing now though whether by consensus or by motion, the chair is asking if it's okay for her to include, uh, in addition to the amounts she has secured in letters from Amherst Media and from um, Mattia Kramer to include whatever portion to make up the 18,000 of members of this body, of which for me individually, I, I would say yes, you feel, feel free to incorporate my support for- And I'll, then I can make a motion. Thank you. Okay. So my motion is that um, we empower the chair, Michelle Miller, to move forward with actions to submit our the changes to our um, mass humanities proposal that that will include in kind amounts up to eighteen thousand dollars and a cash uh, match by this committee um, of more than two thousand dollars. It has to be up to or more than two thousand dollars. If I made to your motion, are we requesting that out of our pockets? Because I'm kind of low right now. <laughs> from the from the from committee coffers. <laughs> from the from the committee from the committee's coffers. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. The first part made a lot of sense. Okay. I'm wondering if we should hold off on that second part until Monday of next week. When, sure. We don't so need do you it, want right? me to adjust my motion? If you would amend it. Uh, yeah. I will amend my motion. Alexis, you have to go. I see yeah. you. I see okay. you. Thank you. So okay. the motion the motion is to empower the chair to move forward with uh, the Mass Humanities um, grant changes um, that may have budgetary impl implications that we will vote on during the next meeting. Or if we if we would just say like you did it the first time that will include in-kind contributions up to $18,000. $18, okay, so we, so the motion amended to empower the chair, Michelle Miller to move forward 
with the changes to the Mass Humanities Grant that can include or will include some in-kind um, amounts up to $18,000. Of which AHRA members will contribute. That's, yes. that's the piece, yeah, that yeah, I, I, I Okay, sure. Does I'm, that make sense? <laughs> what doesn't make sense to me is that the cash donation is actually the most important part of the of the motion because we have to vote on cash, not the in kind. The in kind can go through it. That doesn't matter. It's the okay, cash so, that we have to vote on. Okay, so if everyone's yeah. fine, basically, with me saying that the committee writing a letter on behalf of the committee and saying that we will provide in kind services. Um, as committee members toward this project. It's sort of innate. We've already agreed that we're going to do that. <laughs> but I just want to make sure that everybody, that there may be a committee member who says, you know what, I, I don't want to provide in-kind contributions to this project. If that committee member exists right now, please speak. Um, and then we can just do away with the whole motion, I think, altogether, because I'm hearing that there's some consensus that we can just, I can move forward with that letter. And then next week, we'll go ahead and do the money part as you I would like to do that because I want to know what the cash donation is perfect does yeah. that work for everyone okay awesome that's great and okay so it's 304 um the last thing I'll say is I am really really excited to get an engage Amherst page up for our work um, and to have a more lively page that people can go to start uh, to, to supply thoughts, feedback, um, engage with us. Um, African heritage residents can um, begin to engage and find ways to connect with us. And so um, that's one of other items in the engagement piece. I would really like to spend the majority, if not all of our meeting, next Monday, um, discussing engagement with the Black community. We It keeps sort of getting pushed because of these other items. And I, I just, I feel we really need to spend, and if we can commit to a full hour and a half um, of doing so next week, that would be really great. Is Monday um, at 2 p.m. next week possible for everyone? Yeah? Yes. Yvonne? Checking the calendar. I'm going to wait. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Deborah, that works for you, Miss Bridges. That's, uh, that's August 1st. That's, that's August 1st, right? Yes. Oh my God. July's gone. I know. I know. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. I'm okay with that. Okay. Perfect. Hala, that works for you, Dr. Rhodes, Jennifer, Pamela. Okay. Um, let's awesome. say two to three thirty. Yes. Let's commit a full hour and a half. Let's dig into engagement. We need to get out there, and um, and so let's let's do that. If there are any other items that people would like to see on that agenda, just send me an email. And if there are, I don't have any items that I didn't anticipate, um, and uh, we're not going to approve minutes. We're going to hold off on that. Um, if there aren't any other member reports, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 3.06 p.m. Okay. Anything else? All right. Thank you all. Awesome meeting. <laughs> See you next time.